So every week or so, I teach a new class. Sometimes the classes are kind of back to back, sometimes they're spread out, but there's always new content and new things that I want to share with you guys because makeup is just such an infinite thing. Like there's so many different topics, there's so many different ways to do the same result. So I want to make sure I'm showing you different ways to get to the same end result as well as different ways to get to different end results. So I really want you guys to learn everything you could possibly learn on one station. So um, this time we are going to do this lovely eye makeup class and then coming up soon, um, in about three days or four days from now, I'm going to be teaching a full uh, contour class on myself. So I haven't really talked much about it online yet, but uh, now you guys know the contour class will be on myself. And then after that, I have another uh, makeup artist friend of mine, Griselda, who's coming in and we're gonna do a full beginning to end makeup look on her. So there's a lot going on this month and next month are gonna be crazy months. And for those of you who um, are trial members, I hope you enjoy. This is pretty much an epic five days for you guys with all the content that was on. If you haven't seen those other um, classes that I have online right now, uh, some of them expire tonight, like within the next four or five hours, six hours, whatever. By 11 p.m., they will be gone, except for the Christina class. Christina class is staying. This class will be uploaded you know, when it's uploaded, it takes a while. So usually it takes like a day or so. Um, but then this will not expire for like at least a week or so. So you'll be able to kind of revamp your skills and get everything together very easily. But just take advantage. Make sure you take advantage of those other classes before they go. So without further ado, let's get started on this class. Yeah. Yes? And then also, oh yeah, I wanted to um, mention to you guys uh, the giveaway that I had going on. At the end of class, I will announce who the winner is of my hair set, the Tamana hair set from Bombay Hair. Um, and also, my latest post on Instagram, two things. That post is to have you guys ask me questions for the Q&A. So after we're done with our little demonstration, I'm going to go through all those questions and answer the most popular ones um, during the last several minutes of this class. And then um, also, I want you guys to comment where you're from. I want to know who's watching this class and where do you live. I want to know your time zone and everything. So maybe maybe we can do a class that will land at a good time for you guys. You don't have to stay up all night to watch this. So uh, definitely let me know where you guys are from. And let's just go ahead and get started now. Yes! Okay. So we're going to zoom in so you can see what we're going to do here. She already has her face makeup on. We already have her lips on, which some of you might have seen <laughs> like during the preparatory moments of this class. Um, lippies were done. Blush was done. All that good stuff was done. We are and now go. we're going to go into eyeshadow base. And then we're gonna do brows, and then we're gonna do ultra stuff on the eyes, and I'm gonna clearly explain which brushes I'm gonna use, I'm gonna explain what colors I'm using, and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and zoom in to my beautiful model. Oh, I thought we'd move the stick closer. I was thinking it was oh. <laughs> like no. right there. We will not be moving the stick closer. But is that cool? Should I center you a little bit? Uh is that cool, guys? Okay, I think that's great. So, I'm, when I talk to you, I'll just be back here so I'm like, not, you're not talking to my shoulder or something. So, first things first, I like to get the eyeshadow base out of the way, and I also like to get that under brow highlight out of the way, so that when I'm doing the brows, I don't have to go back and do that, and you know, I'm messing up the brows and all that stuff. So we're gonna do that, then we're gonna do brows. So the eyeshadow base that I use um, is the MAC, uh, Paint pot in soft ochre. We're gonna whip that baby out, and I'm going to use my you know all-time favorite concealer <coughs> brush. This is Mac 287 concealer brush, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give her a nice overall coverage with this awesome product. The reason why I like this is really because it is a good color. Number one, it's not so pinky or grayish like the Painterly is. Soft ochre has a little bit more of that yellow undertone, which is normally what I like to use on pretty much everybody. Um, and it has full cover, so it's like con uh, concealing your entire eyelid so that whatever you end up doing over it shows up a lot better. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just spreading it all over the eye area from the roots of the lashes all the way up to the roots of the brows. 
and making sure that there's no chunks or anything laying around. It's, it's very smooth. So now that that is on, we're going to go ahead and use my flat shader brush from MAC. It's just a basic flat shader brush. And we're going to go in with the Tamana palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is, I'm sorry, no longer available. I've been getting emails left and right asking if I'm selling any of these. I am not a retailer, so I don't sell them. It was only on AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com as well as every department store nationwide. And it sold out really fast. But the good news is AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com now sells the singles. So if there's certain colors that you know you want from this awesome palette, um, you can actually make your own palette on her website and do it that way. So it's just not going to have my name on it, but it is the same color. Believe me, it is the same color as we worked really hard to make them, and you'll love them. So anyway, that's how you can get them. But for now, what we will use is the fresh color, this light matte shade under her brows. So right on her brow bone, we're going to go ahead and add a nice full coverage layer of this awesome color here. And make sure you're very generous when you're applying it. I want to see that the color is pretty bold. And I know light colors, you do have to kind of Make sure you're stamping it really well under the brow bone for it to stand out. So make sure you're being very generous with your application of this particular step, which is why I'm pressing it into her skin and not sweeping it. A good two layers should be more than enough. Okay, once that's done, now we can do the brows because we won't have to add powder over it with this light eyeshadow, which will get all over the place. So going into the brows, I like to get a nice angled brow brush. I have several. I'm going to pick out one that I use the most. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills as well. It is their double-ended uh, angled brow brush. It has the spoolie at one end and the brush at the other end. So you can actually groom and style at the same time. It just makes my life very easy. And we're going to go in with Dip Brow in Ebony. It's just a very universal dark brown. And what I like to do is take a little bit of the dip brow and close it immediately because I'm not trying to get this to dry out. And I put it on the back of my hand right away. And then I can go in and with this brush, go ahead and start styling her brows. And if I need to grab more, I can always grab more. But it's always best to be, to have the lid closed on that so it doesn't dry up too fast. So I'm starting with her arch. Finishing up her tail, and I'm going to take small strokes to fill up the portion above her tail and to raise her arch right up in here. And I kind of like to get that out of the way first. I'll have you turn a little bit. I like to get that out of the way first because it does kind of establish the height of the brows, so I could just match it to the other side um, without having to guess. So once you establish that, then you know everything else goes below. And now underneath, I'm establishing the baseline of the brow. So I'm just kind of tracing the bottom edge of her existing brow shape. And then we're going to start filling in into the hairs above it and lightly filling in the very top edge. Now, if someone says, I want you to square off my brows, or if you're at home wanting to do this for yourself and you want to square off your brows, make sure that this top edge is going straight across and this bottom edge, this especially this beginning part, is parallel to this. And then what you have to do is just very lightly sketch, like bring your brush so that you're sketching it as if you're sketching like a cube a little square here. But always remember that beginning portion of the brow should be a little bit lighter than the rest of it just so that it doesn't look too harsh. You want to get a little bit of the ombre effect going and a lot of people tend to use two colors for that effect like using a darker color here and here and over here and then using a lighter color in the beginnings that also helps but if you're you know wanting to just use one color and keep it simple how I do it is I just concentrate more product on the arch and the tail 
and then I concentrate a lot less product in the beginnings of the brow while I'm squaring it off and then I run over with the spoolie and you have a little bit of that faded effect. So that's usually how I do it, just to keep it simple. Oh my god, it's perfect. I love your bra! I'm like, oh my god. Ta-da! I'm gonna take you home okay, with me, all. girl. <laughs> now this side, same thing. You wanna just go ahead, start with the arch, finish up the tail, drag it down. If you wanna extend it, totally up to you and your client. I usually like to ask my client, you know, how much of an arch do you want me to add to you? Do you want me to change anything at all? And then usually they'll just tell you up front, you know, yeah, I want you to thicken up my hair or, oh, I want you to extend my arch or whatever you want, whatever they want to tell you, they'll tell you. And then you can just kind of go according to their wishes because honestly, eyebrows can make or break a look. You can do the best job ever with a client's skin and eyes, but if you mess up their eyebrow, they most likely will not be calling you again. So I like to make sure my clients are happy with their eyebrows. So again, I'm doing exactly what I did on the other side. Now I'm just kind of working on this baseline here, making sure it's nice and sharp. And then this top line here to create that squared edge and filling in the beginnings without going too dark. Now we're just brushing through so we can get a nice faded effect here. And then any areas that you feel like you need to refine a little bit more, feel free to go back in and refine them. And if you ever need to go back and redo a little bit or kind of revisit how thick you want to go or how thin you want to go, it's totally okay to go back and forth until you're happy with the overall look. I'm just brushing it to get the hair to just kind of go in one direction here. And then now comes a little bit of the concealer part. What I like to use is the Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills Pro Pencil in base number one. I use this on the top edge of the brow sometimes just to clean up areas that look too thick. So like right in here, how it was looking just a little bit thicker than the other side, I'm using this product to kind of camouflage it. And now with the flat brush, I can go in and just do a little blending here. I don't like to blend too much, so I'm just kind of wiping very lightly. And then we have a little bit more of that cleaner swoop. And if you need to kind of go back and refine anything, you can always do so. Like I said, I do a lot of this back and forth thing until I'm like really happy with the outcome. Okay. And you can also use this awesome concealer underneath if you want to add a little bit more of that definition and clean look on the bottom edge of the brows. But we have already done the brow bone highlight, so this part isn't necessary unless you want to do a little bit more refining, which I'm doing right now. So it just kind of looks a little bit more chiseled. And right in here, we could do the same thing, just to match the brightness. You could also use your finger for the top edge to smooth it out and make it look very, very nice and clean. I feel like eyebrows are just so important. I did a class um, kind of towards the beginning of this whole school thing, this online school, and it was like a two hour class just on eyebrows. It was kind of ridiculous, but it, I just wanted to show like different ways of doing the brows using different products so you know like what to use when. But I have to say that Anastasia Dip Brow is one of my favorite products for eyebrows because you can do so much with it. It's very versatile. Love, love. What do you normally use? Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I love her. But I usually use the color medium brown on me. Cause okay. I get too crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I get too crazy. If I use ebony, I have like brown, black brown. No, like, really? They look like they've been sharpied on. That is so funny. Yeah. I kind of go in between. Sometimes I'm in the mood for ebony and sometimes I'm, I'm in the mood for a dark brown. Yeah. I just can't dabble into that quite yet. <laughs> 
Unless I want some Sharpie brows. Yeah, Sharpie brows. All right, so right now I'm just kind of cleaning up the face a little bit and getting it ready for the eyes. So now that the brows are done, the brow bone highlight is done, we can go right in to starting the whole process of shaping the eye. So what we're gonna do next is contour the eye. Just like you contour the face, there's areas of dark, there's areas of light, so you kind of bring out certain features and make other features recede. What we wanna do is start shaping her crease, which is basically contouring the eye, with a really soft kind of a taupey caramel brown. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna help us kind of start the shading process. And then from there, it'll be very easy for us to start drawing a more heavier cat eye on her. So right now we're gonna go in with the color from On Sides of Beverly Hills called Bengal. This one here, it's like a caramel kind of shade. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to get a blending brush to go ahead and start the shading process. Now, the blending brush that I really like these days is from Haku Hodo. Um, looks like this. And it is BJ142. And I'm just going to just start right on the outer corner. And we'll turn a little bit this way. Perfect. And I'm going to start kind of creating a little point out here to extend the eyelid and the crease area to make it look a little bit more exotic. She already has such an exotic look, so we're playing off of her features right now. And now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of rolling the color in towards the inner portion of her crease and the inner socket of her eye. And all this is doing is contouring her eye. It's not really a dark, dark color where you can really mess up, which is why I like to kind of start soft and then build. And if you drag it all the way to the inner part and then also drag it out, what we're doing is we're really extending the eye shape. So now this eye has been contoured. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Starting with this outer corner giving it a little flicky flicky right on the outer portion here, going kind of towards the temple, and now rolling the rest of the color inside the socket area of her eye and that inner socket line right in here. Just make sure you're giving it a nice flare so we have a little bit of that exotic look like we were talking about. This is just one more layer of the same thing. I like to go heavy. All right, so now that both the eyes are contoured, we can go right in to adding that real crazy depth <laughs> on the outer corner of the eye right in here. So what we're gonna do for this cat eye smoky effect is we're gonna go into the color called chocolate, which is a really, really dark brown. I love how I'm like trying to guess what's showing in your thing. Okay, like, right girl. here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> chocolate right here in the outer corner and if you're unsure as to where to put this depending on your client's eye shape what I would have you do is go ahead and open your eyes where the um, the crease line here right in the crease that line wherever it would meet your eyeliner wing that's where you want to place that darkest color so we're going in with chocolate and we're literally sticking it right into that area where the crease line would meet her lash line, kind of. And then now she can close her eyes. And now I know that the placement's fine, so I can just go ahead and blend the edges. Now, I was originally talking to you guys about, on my post, about uh, blending without blending. So my whole thing is, okay, everyone's always like, blend, 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 just keep blending, keep blending but it's very easy to wipe off everything that you've put on. So my thing is, when you're blending, the blending brush is kind of blending for you, so you don't have to sit there for so many minutes trying to blend a color. All you really have to do is place the color and then move it over a little bit. And that movement of the brush, basically here I am placing the color and I'm moving it over, 
the light stroke of your wrist when you're doing it, do it like a feather. And it ends up moving the color very seamlessly over the skin so that you don't actually have to sit there and blend for so long. So the, let the brush do the work and let the pressure that you put from your hand to the skin determine how harsh the line is gonna be versus how soft the line is gonna be, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna demonstrate it again so you kind of know now that I explained to you why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, you can kind of look out for what it is that I'm doing exactly. So again, I'm placing the color here. I'm kind of digging it into that little corner. And all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of moving it over. And you can totally use a clean finger to soften up the edge a little bit, but I'm not gonna sit here and blend for so long and then what happens is when you're blending for too long or too much, you're wiping off all your hard work and then it ends up turning very grayish or muddy and then you have to go back and add more product. So the whole point is to not waste time and just move the color. So you have this color here, we're just slightly moving it to overlap it with the previous color. So we already had that lighter caramel color underneath. So this dark chocolate, I'm kind of slightly moving over the caramel so it looks like a gradient between the dark and the medium and then that goes into her light under her eyebrow without having to sit here and blend for so many days. So that's exactly how you do it. It does take practice. I don't expect everyone to get it on their first try, but please understand, you know, it's, it's you don't have to sit here and blend for so long to get the right effect. Just place the color like I just did right here. Go ahead and open your eyes again. Just so they can see it's just that little fold here connected to her lash line. And then go ahead and close. And we're really just digging the color in and then instead of really blending, we can literally just move the color over and then with a clean finger, you can absolutely just do a little bit of wiping over the edges just so that it looks like you sat there and blended for a long time, but it literally takes two seconds. Girl, you must have a magic finger because what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> blend with your finger would take off my whole eyeshadow. You have to have a really, really light touch. Like, I'm not, like, wiping off her. No, she, she's, a, like, she's, <laughs> she has amazing fingers. I'm not even kidding. Thank you. They're like a little magicians there because if I touch my eyeshadow, it's... It's, <laughs> it's all coming off. It's gone. That's so funny. Be very, very gentle with your uh, wiping and your movements. All right. So now we have this like outer corner, which is super smoky and just, oh my God, it's so beautiful. But we're gonna take it to the next level and we're going to go ahead and add a really light kind of a, okay, so this is all considered contouring on the eyes still. We haven't added color yet. This is still kind of base contouring. So what we've done so far is we've contoured her entire eye socket with the caramel color. We've now layered this darker chocolate color on the outer corner of her eyes to give it a little bit of depth. Now we're going to add a pop of shine right in her tear duct area. That's going to be with a, a MAC color that I really like. I wanted to throw that on her. It's called Nylon. And it's kind of like a whitish, um, creamy shade, but it's very, very frosty. Um, and then if we need to, which I did in her picture, so I might as well do it again, um, add white frost to it as well, just for that really bright pearl right in her tear duct. So we're gonna do that next and then we're gonna add rose right on the outer corner. So really this eye look, it takes a very, very short amount of time to complete as long as you guys understand the whole uh, blending without blending process. Real quick what I'm gonna do that I notice on the camera, the video camera likes to show a little bit different than what I'm seeing in person. I'm adding a little layer of Bengal again, that caramel color, right in the crease, above the crease actually, so that the um, chocolate looks a little bit more blended. So really the blending is not about blending, like someone may have just kept blending the chocolate instead, but what I'm doing is I'm layering that lighter color so it just kind of looks like I blended it up. So it's just a lot easier. So now, back to that shader brush, the MAC shader brush. I'm going in with a color called nylon, which uh, looks like this. And I'm going to add that right on this inner corner here, which is her tear duct area. And that adds a really cool pop of shine. So pretty. I love it. Mm -hmm. 
And especially with her eye shape, it really kind of gives that exotic look. And you can create this with almost any eye shape. You just have to kind of draw it. Okay? So we're adding a little bit of that. And now I'm going to go in with white frost, which is literally the how it looks like. White frost is the name of the color. And we're just dotting that like a pearl right in the beginnings of the chair duct. So everything is done in a gradient. Go ahead and look up to the ceiling. We're also going to add this lovely color right underneath where your tear duct would meet your lower lash line, just so it has a nice kind of uh, flow to it. At this point, we are done with those matte shades. We're gonna go back to my lovely little palette here, and I'm gonna go in with a color called Blush. Okay, Blush is kind of a shimmery, apricot beige. And close your eyes. I'm gonna do the press and slide, which I've been teaching for the past several months. The press and slide is a method that I've started doing several years ago when I realized that just tapping color on the eyelid like this, tap, tap, doesn't hold. When you press and slide it across, then it's really sticking to the eye better and the eyeshadow holds and then you can pat it down. So the press and slide. <laughs> Yes, I should write a book on just the press and slide. <laughs> My one technique, I think. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now that that is done with this, and another thing, I, yes, 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 I am a brush whore. I have every freaking brush, <laughs> but I like to be simple, and I, I tend to reuse the same brush over and over, over again for, you know, of course, on the same person, um, but for various areas on the eye, because especially a flat shader brush like this from MAC is so easy because it fits different areas of the eye very nicely and it's very tight and, and um, doesn't you know fluff all over the place so you can get a very nice and clean application with this. So I'm going to use it again now with a color called Sangria. Sangria is that rosy tone that we will be using as her pop of color. So Sangria, grabbing that and applying it with the press and slide motion right on that corner where the chocolate meets the blush tongue. And then very lightly, I'm just tapping it onto the center. I'm using my finger to blend, not wipe. And we have this awesome pop of color on the outer corner of her eye. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Just press and slide this very, very full pigmented color and now we can just kind of drag it in to let it overlap with the blush tone. And it has a nice blend to it. Maybe a little bit more. It's actually one of the most popular shades from that palette. It's such a pretty like cranberry tone. So pretty. Okay. So now we have the pop of color, we have the shading. Now we're gonna start with the eyeliner. So, and that like two seconds. So we're gonna start with the eyeliner, we're gonna do the bottoms, finish the whole bottom eyeliner, we're gonna do that little dip thingy, we're gonna smudge the lower lash line, and then when we do the top, we're gonna do a very flowy kind of a long wing, and then we're gonna add more eyeshadow to the bottom and the top with black eyeshadow and then maybe a hint of brown if we need it. But that's really what's gonna bring that whole look together. So I'm gonna go in with Inglot Gel Liner, uh, number 77, which is the blackest black I could find. I don't know if you guys know of anything blacker than that, but if you do, feel free to comment below on my latest post on Instagram. And I have several brushes that I want to show you when it comes to doing wing liner or bottom liner. But one that I really want to show you right now is the Sigma Winged Liner Brush. It is pretty awesome. I'm just cleaning it right now so I can get a really fresh uh, application. But I'm going to show you in just a second. This is what it looks like. This is the Sigma Winged Liner Brush. It's super tiny, super sharp, and it is number E06. 
So this is a Sigma winged liner brush. And what I like it for is for the bottom and the top. So because this look that we're doing right here is very exotic and it is going to require some precision and some practice, this is the brush that I recommend for you guys to practice with. Once you get it down, you can really use any brush, but this is like by far the easiest. So I'm just putting a little bit of that Inglot gel liner on my hand, saturating the brush, and we're going to go ahead and have my model look up. We're going to fill in the entire waterline. And we are now going to double up and really thicken up the bottom underneath her lash line. So this bottom portion here, it's completely up to you and your client how thick you want to go. But I love a really thick bottom liner. Um, I feel like it really adds to that Arabic style, which is totally my style. So I tend to try to do this on everyone. Um, even my brides, they usually do allow me to go a little heavier with their bottom liner. But once in a while, I'll have a bride that really doesn't like a heavy bottom liner, and that's okay. So you have to kind of ask your clients how thick they're willing to go and then kind of, you know, go according to that. So now that I've laid this huge fat line underneath her eye, I can now start inching down at her tear duct. So I'm just following her natural shaping. And this brush makes it so much easier for me. And now I just connect into her bottom liner. So it's just a very, very, um, you know, cat eye shape. And depending on how, you know, sharp you want to go, how long you want to go, you can definitely extend it, make it more dramatic. For photographs, for fashion, for runway, the, the longer the better. Okay. So now we have a really cool, like, long cat eye. Very fat cat. Total cat eye. <laughs> I mean, I know it looks crazy right now, but I promise it ends up looking like the picture we posted. <laughs> That's the whole point of the class. <laughs> okay, not like a Broadway musical. So look up again. We're going to finish this bottom waterline here. I'm going to go really thick with it. We're going to double up on the bottom edge. Make sure there's no gaps in between the lashes. That's the last thing you need. So we filled up this lovely thick line again. And now we're going to start uh, going towards her tear ducts. Right in through here, I'm drawing my line down and connecting it into this awesome liner here. So cool. Mm -hmm. So when I first saw Brittany's page, I was just so excited because she does this liner all the time. And I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah, but not this fast. I'm, I'm sure you're fast. I'm like two minutes. I'm like, <laughs> this is me like five <laughs> hours later. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm sure just kidding. The five-hour liner better be damn good. All right. You like that uh, meme that says, never ask a girl with perfect thin liner why she's late? Oh, God. I feel like just my eyes naturally like are like that, so mm -hmm. I just draw a line, and it's, it's like, so perfect. oh, my God. Oh, I love the shape of your I mean, no. hello, that's why I was like, okay, this is the look for the Britney Bear class. Yeah, like, gosh. this is so the look. So now that we've done the bottom liner, by the way, we're not done. We have to smudge it. We have to blend it and all that good stuff. But now that I have this, you know, stuff on my hand, I might as well use it. So we're going to have her um, look straight ahead into the camera, and I'm going to draw her wings. The reason why I like to draw the wings with the eyes open is because sometimes when the eyes are closed, you tend to go somewhere else with the wing, and it's very hard to stay focused on the right level. So what I want to do is while her eyes are open, I'm just going to go ahead and start extending her wing like that. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I keep wanting to turn this away. Like, what's over there? No. And look up again. And we're just going to now fatten the bottom of the wing so it can match the bottom liner a little bit better. Okay, so that wing is done. We're going to do the same on the other side just to get our wings 
in proportion here. Okay, and now just kind of thickening up the bottom to match the bottom liner. Okay, now that the wings are on, we can do the rest of the eyeliner. So the whole thing with eyeliner, guys, like, again, don't be hard on yourself. Eyeliner takes so much practice. You have to have the right product, the right mm -hmm. tools to spread it. You have to have and make sure that it's really wet. So if you're working with an eyeliner that's halfway dried up, you're not going to get this fluid of a look. You can keep trying and keep trying, and it's never going to look this good. So throw it away buy fresh product and always close that cap as soon as you're done taking whatever amount you want to take out of it do not leave the cap open you are just going to screw yourself so close that cap remember to put it away and use whatever amount is on your hand now once the amount that's on your hand starts getting sticky then you open up your product and get fresh product out don't don't feel like, oh my God, I have to use a certain amount of product for this certain line or whatever. Don't be so strict on yourself. It's okay to go back in and grab more product. I usually don't like to grab a lot at once because it does dry. So it's going to dry out my hand and then all of a sudden it's like, what a waste. So get little by little. Make sure your brush is always saturated and wet. Keep it moist, not by adding water because you're going to dilute the product. Keep it moist by having fresh product. And then when you're drawing your lines, it glides on so much easier, and especially with a brush like this, um, you know, having the Sigma winged liner brush. The other liner brush that I really love if I'm not doing like a really sharp cat eye, if I'm doing something that's just kind of basic like what I have on, um, I use a brush number 263 from MAC. It's an angled liner brush. It's so easy. And then, you know, also the thin, you know, few bristle brushes that a lot of you guys have, not with the angle, but just bristles. If you are more used to that kind of a style, that's great too. I feel like this is awesome because it has a little angle on it and it's very thin. So those of you who are used to one or the other, both of you would be able to use something like this. Um, I don't know. I've, I've had it for so long and I just never really used it until recently. And now I'm like a huge, a huge advocate for this brush. So definitely get something like this. Morphe brushes has so many brushes to choose from too. I'm sure you can find at least five brushes like this. Um, and just, you know, make sure that you practice, practice, practice. Do not feel bad if you're not getting the perfect wing. My God, like I have 13 years under my belt of doing winged eyeliner and now I'm able to do it within seconds. But me starting off, even my first five years, you know, a lot of you are only on year one or year two and you're doing fabulous. I'm seeing your posts under the Dress Your Face Live hashtag based on my class and I'm seeing that you guys are actually learning. That's awesome. When I was starting out, like I said, even five year mark, I was still sitting there struggling with eyeliner. So don't feel bad, you know, just, you just have to actually do it over and over again to get better and better. So now that I've rambled, my eyeliner got all dry. And <laughs> it's all crusty. <laughs> okay, fresh product. I'm getting that brush nice and wet. Close your eyes. Now we're gonna connect that wing into the rest of the liner. It's up to you how thick or thin you want to go with this. Actually, it's up to your client. Um, I, I, I know that a lot of you out there who are makeup artists, especially seasoned makeup artists that have been, <coughs> been there, done that, and you know you like to kind of do your own thing on your clients. I mean, believe me, I like to do my thing on my clients too. But ultimately, this is a customer service you know, job, and you want to keep your clients happy. So... One way, one tip that I have, I know that was one of the questions from another class that I wasn't able to answer right away, but one tip that I have when it comes to if your client likes something a certain way and you hate it, do you have to do it? Go ahead and look down. Um, the tip I have is do, like when you do the trial on them, do it their way, take a picture of it, then do the other eye your way or just bump it up a notch and do your thing over what you already did take another picture and show them both the pictures. Most likely, they will choose your side. Why? Because you are trained to know what looks good in pictures and they may not understand that concept. So a lot of the times when I've had a bridal consultation and they want a certain look and I'm just like, oh my God, I don't think it's gonna look right, but they're really pushing for that look. Like, I'm, I love black eyeshadow. I know a lot of brides hate black eyeshadow. They're just like, are you kidding me? It's a daytime wedding. But I, you know, 
I'm half Indian, half Afghan, you know, us people, we like, we like it heavy. But, um, you know, I try to get all, all of my girls on the same page, but sometimes if they're just saying no on black, no on dark brown, whatever it is, I'll do it their way first, but again, I'll do it my way after, I'll take a picture, and then they're like, oh my god, that's why. So, I like the dark, because look how pretty that outer corner is, but after this liner step is done, we're going to do black eyeshadow, and then you're really going to understand why I like a black eyeshadow. But, um, yeah, so... Take a picture, that way they'll understand why you like it your way. And usually you could get them to kind of go to the dark side. <laughs> go to the dark side. So right now I'm just kind of connecting the wing into her regular liner. It's very important to lift the skin up so you can get deep into her lash line. Smooth it, make sure it's that you're not skipping over any uh, skin here. Open. And look down in that direction. This is what I do when I'm trying to get a nice sharp connection in the uh, tear duct, is I have them look down in the opposite direction. Now I can even sharpen up her little cat eye thing. Okay. And now, this outer corner here, I want to thicken it up. Go ahead and close. And I'm just going to smooth that in. Okay. Cool. Looks so good. Looking good already. <laughs> so, I understand it's still scary to a lot of you, so I'm about to soften it up just a bit. I'm going to go in with my Morphe brush number M515. It's a tiny, tiny little smudger brush. And I'm going to dip right into the Noir eyeshadow. And go ahead and look up to the ceiling. I am now going to set her waterline with Noir eyeshadow, which is the darkest black ever. And what that's doing is it's preventing her uh, waterline from smearing. So a lot of you had that question just based on the post that we've been posting with this look is... I love it, but how do I prevent it from gathering up in my tear duct and becoming like a raccoon later? And this is how I do it. I just set it with black eyeshadow so it absorbs the moisture and it sets the makeup just like powder sets your face makeup. This is setting the eye makeup. And it's not going to run. She can cry and it's not going to run. She can yeah. cry. Yeah, she can totally <laughs> cry on her wedding day. I'm not saying cry right now. So same brush, we're gonna dip into a dark brown color so we could fade that black downward. So I'm just kind of wiping it off on any old towel. And we're using chocolate to now, go ahead and look up again, to now fade that bottom edge so that it looks a little bit faded and it doesn't have that harsh effect anymore. So it's just a lot of smudging Make sure you're not putting on too much product because then you can get a lot of fallout. But the cool thing is if you guys have taken any of my face classes, you know that I use a lot of powder under the eyes so nothing sticks. So even if you do get a little bit of fallout, don't worry. Wipe it off right away. It's not going to stick to the face. You shall be fine. So yeah, just rub the bottom. Make sure it's nice and faded, looking kind of like a good gradient there. And then you could even go in with, uh, let's see here, a pencil brush with Bengal, that caramel color, and go one level below that. So you're literally fading the black into a dark brown and then fading the dark brown into the Bengal. And now we have like that true kind of a, a fade. Maybe you can kind of move forward and look up a little bit. So they could, yeah, see that? Okay, perfect, perfect. So it's going from black to dark brown to bangle. Where over here, we've not set it with um, any of the lighter colors yet. We only put black, so it's still harsh. So I love doing this so that you can get that soft gradient and it doesn't look all crazy anymore. Well, to me, it doesn't look crazy. <laughs> Maybe to some of you out there. <laughs> so this is just the black here, just kind of finishing up the setting. And then we're wiping it off. We're going to go into chocolate. 
and we're going to add chocolate right along that bottom edge and we're doing a little bit of this rubbing back and forth movement so we can fade chocolate into the black really nicely just rub 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 and now with the pencil brush we're going into the bengal by the way my pencil brush is also sigma pencil e30 and we're going to add this uh, bengal right under it for that caramel tone and we can flick off any little fallouts and now we have this really cool faded effect on the bottom of that eye too. All right. Okay, so now some of the last eyeshadow steps will be for that top corner there where I have the dark brown. I'm gonna go back in with my Morphe 506 brush. That's the brush that we used for the outer corner with the dark brown. I'm now gonna add black. We're gonna make this like very exotic. So we're adding the Noir eyeshadow. And I'm just gonna add it into that area where the fold of her eye meets the wing of her eyeliner. And I'm just shading it in there. And I'm also letting it slightly drag into the beginnings of that rose color so that it looks like the black is fading into the rose. Okay? And that is what kind of really, for me, it completes that eye shape. Especially in photographs, chocolate and browns, they don't photograph very dark. They actually kind of disappear on camera. So if you really want that sharp edge, Go for it, girls. Just go with black. After chocolate, though. And the reason why I do chocolate first is for that, you know, to be almost like a catalyst for the uh, blending process. So you don't have to sit there and blend the black into gray. I don't want any gray tones. I want it to be rich. So starting with brown keeps it rich and also helps the blending process so that you're not having to blend out of nowhere a dark color. Okay, let's check. Ooh, yes. Looks so good. Looks gorgeous. Okay, now we're ready for mascara. So we're going to curl her lashes. Go ahead and look down to the floor. This is my uh, Shiseido eyelash curler. Is this okay right here? Mm-hmm. My Shiseido eyelash curler. Oh, my God, what was this? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, I like it. <laughs> it makes me look more exotic. It, it looks like a, a little bit more tribal. Right. So I guess something was on my lash curler. Maybe somebody wanted to sabotage this. Mm -hmm. But worry not. It's gone. Ta-da! All right. Back to the lash curler. Look down. Is this okay right here? Yeah, of course. Girl, you can take out my lashes. <laughs> I'm so rough with my eyes. I have poked myself so many times with lash curlers. I cut them off. Are you serious? Yeah, they finally grew back. It was depressing. Oh my god. Right. How so, did that happen? Because you know the little, it's like cool? the rubber thing that yeah. if you don't have it, I was like, <sighs> and then I was like, Oh. Why do I look so weird? And then I looked really close. I had like one lash. Oh my god! It's so depressing. I would have cried, like really cried. I think I did. Well, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good now. Yeah. <laughs> I have lashes. Look up to the ceiling. This is my favorite mascara. This is the Hypnos Drama Waterproof, and I always, always, always use waterproof because I just don't want to risk it. So even my clients who are just not used to waterproof mascara. Um, I don't actually give them a choice unless they are wearing extensions, like lash extensions, you're not allowed to have waterproof mascara on, but I will still use waterproof mascara on the bottom lashes and stick with a non-waterproof on the top or just no mascara at all for the top because I just don't want to risk my brides crying and then stuff running down their face. So I'm just applying this mascara to her bottoms first. And if there's any areas that smudge, I just go right in and smear it into the eyeliner right away. I don't really wait for it to dry or anything. Okay, so bottoms are done. Now we're gonna do tops. 
look down. When I do the top, I lift up the eyelid and I just kind of go straight up. And anytime I feel like she needs to blink, I just kind of back off and I allow her to blink and I can dig right in again. Just kind of spike it out. It's really helpful pulling the lid up though because that way even if she tries to blink, she really can't unless I let go. Plus, that lift helps to actually lift the lashes so they don't just kind of fall down after. So now we are ready to apply the falsies. Let's see. Okay, the ones we're going to use today, I haven't used these yet. Um, it just says let's lash it out on the box. This is from Juvia's Place online. If you just search Juvia's Place, they have a ton of these and they also carry like other... Um, cosmetic companies and stuff like that. They're super pretty. Really pretty exotic stuff. So they have very good, inexpensive lashes. So I thought, okay. My makeup. I think so we'll use it. I'm doing a close up for you, girl. Oh, yeah. Just getting those eyes. <laughs> so basically, I do a giveaway with every class for those of you who uh, are new here and don't understand my whole giveaway thing. I do a giveaway in every main class, just not the bonus classes, of course, so those are just extra. So what happens during the giveaway is in order to enter the giveaway, you have to take screenshots of this class to prove that you're a member and post it on your page. So if you're posting any pictures from this class or any of the other classes, um, hashtag dress your face live on those posts so I can see that you posted, that you're a member, and you can officially enter giveaways. So it's always exciting. So first I'm going to go ahead and measure these just to see how they fit her. These are pretty long, so I am going to trim them. Okay, open. All right. I'm going to trim a little bit actually off the inner corner because I do like the spikes on the outer corner. So I'm going to trim off the inner corner this time. And I'm also going to kind of curl them. The thing that I do with lashes, I usually curl them so they stick up. That's very smart. I never used to curl mine, and then I saw you last time, and I was like, hmm. It really makes a difference. It so does. Yeah. So I'm holding the lashes up, and I'm just going to dig right in with the curler. And uh, give them a good, a good curling action here so that they stick up a little bit better. They don't look so straight. And the glue that I use is from House of Lashes. I always, always talk about this glue. This is obviously the best thing in the world. It's latex free, so it's like, you know, mm -hmm. gentle and stuff for allergy eyes like mine. Oh. Mm -hmm. Rubbing it all over I'm your body. Gonna, <laughs> I just love it so much. <laughs> you know? Put it on my fingers, too. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm getting a nice thick amount because I just don't like it when the inner corners pop up. Mm -hmm. And the other cool thing about this, uh, glue is that it's not super liquidy so it's already kind of sticky as it is so you don't have to wait so long to apply it on your client or on yourself it just kind of is already ready so I'm going to have you look down I start in the center and then I dig in to the outer corner I let that set and then I dig in to the inner corner and let that set right in there And we're just going to go ahead and let it slide a little bit down so I know that it's not covering too much of her eyeliner. Go ahead and open. Look in that corner. A little lower. And we're going to get this to dry a little bit. And then once it's all the way dry, I can help in case there's any areas that feel stuck. I can help you open those up. Oh my, very exotic. <laughs> Look down again. I know I'm going to have to go get married after right now. I know. Go to some wedding. A very exotic wedding. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and keep them closed. We'll let it really dry before I let her roll her eyes and stuff. Just wave, wave, wave until it gets really, really 
sticky. And I love the fact that I have like pointy nails because I could literally go in and poke it on. Make sure it sticks good. Open, look up all the way. Mm hmm. Cool. Okay, now we are ready for the other Let's one. Do a close look at up that. on these amazing lashes. Oh my god, they're so spiky and nice. I know, I love them. Spiky looks good on you, I've noticed. Really? On your page, yeah. Hmm. I was going through all your like lash pictures trying to figure out which lash I'm going to put on you today. Uh huh. I even texted her, her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. You're like, do you have <laughs> these lashes? Like, girl, I <laughs> used those out like 10 months ago. <laughs> I'm a little late. But I found some that work. Yeah. They work very well. Yeah. Pretty. Okay, we're doing the curl again. Now it's all standing up, looking cool. Gonna get some glue on these babies. It's like falling asleep. Uh -oh. Make sure you guys put enough glue, especially on both ends because you don't want anything popping up. And then once it's sticky, which this is already sticky, but I always kind of like to wait a few seconds, then we can really pop them on and get it to stick nicely on her eyes. All right, center to center. Then I stick on this outer corner and then I finish off the inner corner. Go ahead and close your eyes. We're going to let this dry. While this dries, I'm going to repeat every step we did on the eye. So in case you guys missed any steps or any brush names, I will give those to you now again. So you don't have to wait till tomorrow to see the recap. All right. So while her eyes are closed, we're just going to get this to dry and let me tell you what we did. So first, we started off with the eyeshadow base. Uh, soft ochre from MAC all over her eyes and what we used was my uh, MAC 287 brush to apply that. Then we did the under brow highlight which was fresh from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Tomato Palette and we used the flat MAC shader brush for that. Um, then after that was done we added uh, the eyebrows with the dip brow and I used the angled brow brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills as well. After the dip brow was done, we kind of cleaned up the edges with the Anastasia base number one, which is like a kind of like a concealer pencil, if you want to call it that. Um, and then once we kind of chiseled out the brows a little bit more, everything was perfect. Then we went into the eyeshadow. So we did bangle first in the crease just to create some dimension. Then we added chocolate on the outer corners. Then we added nylon from MAC on the inner tear duct and then white frost for like that little pearly shine that you see in there. Um, after that was done, we added blush, which is uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills color, right on the inner half of the eye. And then the outer half of the eye, we did uh, sangria, which is that kind of cranberry tone. And then after that, we did the eyeliner. Um, we did the bottoms really thick and then we kind of smudged it with some brown eyeshadow as well as so we started with black, brown, then caramel. Um, and then with the top, we did the eyeliner. We did the wing first while the eyes were open. Then we went in with the eyeliner. And the eyeliner that we used was um, the Inglot Gel number 77, the best black eyeliner I've ever tried. But if you guys have other suggestions, I'd love to hear what you guys have tried and loved. So you can comment that below in the comments on my Instagram. Um, and then once that was done, we added more eyeshadow on the outer corner of the eye to kind of fuse the eyeshadow in with that beautiful wing that we created. So that's kind of everything that we did. Um, as far as the brushes, I love Hakuhodo brushes. I love Morphe brushes. Um, Sigma brushes have been a huge, you know, hit for me lately. Um, and yeah, so those are the brands. And then of course MAC. I mean. MAC brushes are very easily attainable. Loved by everyone. Yes. Look down again in that corner. I'm just going to make sure this is not moving. And then this corner again. All right. Great. 
All right, now lastly, the last thing, as if we have not done enough last steps. Um, I like to just kind of go over the eyeliner where the glue is and make it a little blacker. So this is the Galactic Eyeliner uh, felt tip pen. And I'm just using this to kind of go over the glued section so that it just doesn't look like glue anymore. And yeah, look straight ahead like that. Any areas that just kind of, you can see the glue, go ahead and just cover that up. Although the glue does dry clear, so not to worry later on. It's just that I like to take pictures of my clients right after I'm done, so I'm not trying to get no glue in the pictures. So now you have a beautiful close-up. I'm like, I'm trying to do my close-up. I'm a little bit sick all. Do your thing. So we have this beautiful so close-up. She can show side to side, that beautiful wing action going on the inner corner and the outer corner. We have this awesome tear duct that's really bright so that the wings actually show up a lot stronger. We have the beautiful rosy color on the outer corner with that smoky outer corner as well. So this is considered a cat eye smoke. It's not a full smoky eye, but it is a cat eye smoke because the smoky part is only on the outer corner. And Sorry, girl. No, no, you got it. You got it. <laughs> oh, this is where you take I'm just going to be like this all day. <laughs> Poor thing is like trying to put her head in. taking selfies for you and then tagging you, of course. Well, hopefully they got a good screenshot. No, I'm, I'm sure. sure you had plenty of options to screenshot. I mean, that's how you're going to have to enter all these giveaways anyway. So screenshot away. We have now completed the lovely yeah. Brittany Bear makeup tutorial so much. of this very exotic yes. look. It's so sexy, so gorgeous, and so doll-like, and so open-eyed, and it made her eyes look twice as big as they already are, and we extended both sides, and we rounded up the center, and we added these spiky lashes to really open up the eyes and not make them look heavier. So, bam, there you go. That's how you do it. You look gorgeous. Muchas gracias. Absolutely <laughs> stunning. So now, Brittany and I are going to change places. I'm going to take the hot seat. I'm going to answer some questions from the Q&A. Thank you. All right. And uh, we're going to say bye, Brittany. Oh, I'm going to take, take the camera with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to lower this a little bit because I am a shirt. We're going to back up. And I'm going to sit right here and answer some of your questions. Okay. By the way, thank you guys uh, on the congratulations that we just finally bought our first home. It has been such a crazy, crazy ride the past uh, 14 months that we've been house hunting. And now finally I found a house that I thought was good enough to buy because it's just been uh, a little insane. We're in the LA area and the inventory isn't that lovely. So uh, now that we found the house that we've been, you know, picturing ourselves in, the next phase is, of course, changing it to make it more me. So, of course, I'm going to renovate every freaking room, uh, although it doesn't need anything. Um, you know, when you work from home and you've been working hard your whole life, you kind of want to be in an environment where you're very happy. And that's something I've always told you guys in a lot of our interviews when I've been talking to you guys about how I got started and how I grew and all that good stuff. You know, the whole point is to be happy with what you're doing. Because I do work from home with my classes and my brides, they come to my home studio and everything. I want to go into a place where I feel inspired and where my clients can feel inspired and we can all have a great time. So if you guys are makeup artists that work from home too, you know, it's actually not very expensive doing your own decorating. Um, what I first did was when I first got started, I worked from my mom's kitchen before I was married, before I moved out. Um, so I worked from the kitchen for many, many years uh, since I could remember. I started, well, I'm not supposed to say this, but I started when I was 13. But really, I, you know, got licensed at 17. So that's when I was really like cutting hair and doing things like legitimately. But I would use my mom's kitchen. So when I moved out and got married, I used, uh, there was a vanity room that we used to have attached to our bathroom. And it was our only bathroom in our apartment. My God, my husband was like... Are you kidding me? You're using our only bathroom all day for your clients. But it had a nice like sitting area. This was in Fremont, California. All my Fremont students and clients uh, still remember those days. And so that's where it kind of really got busy. And then I moved to LA into a larger condo. I ended up with three bedrooms. So I was able to use one bedroom for 
my studio room. I, you know, re renovated that room even though we weren't owning the condo. We were just renting, but I got, you know, written permission to do it. Put hardwood floors. Um, it didn't cost too much because it was laminate. You know, I went to Ikea, bought shelves and stuff, and that was really easy to put up on the sides. Very inexpensive as well. You just do it yourself. And I basically made my own salon room, which if you scroll down my Instagram, I have pictures of my current and old salon rooms um, all over my Instagram and on my Facebook and stuff so you guys can see uh, where it all really uh, went down. And so now I'm just very excited that we have a home of our own that we finally can like really create some masterpieces in and I cannot wait to give you a tour of the new studio space once it's ready. Uh, give me a couple weeks on that. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for the love and the support and it's been a crazy journey. You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, about overnight success and stuff and you know there's a saying like overnight success is not overnight it overnight success happens after like 10 years of hard work so whatever all these people are seeing you know maybe someone blows up online all of a sudden but you have to understand like it's not an all of a sudden thing they've been working for so long probably their whole lives to get to that point and then finally this one big break and they can make it so i'm here to help you guys focus on your dreams focus on your goals whether you want to be a makeup artist or hairstylist or whether you're a stay-at-home mom and you just want to get to the next level with your artistry and live you know a little bit more of a fun uh, more fulfilled lifestyle you know I'm here to tell you that everything that you want in life can absolutely happen you just have to actually set goals that are attainable and reach them and then once you reach one goal you set a higher goal and reach that one too and never give up always know that there's something bigger and brighter down the road for you and if now is not the time the time must be coming and it's probably going to be a better surprise than what you could even imagine there's always something better for you in the future so that's my little rant of the evening my little emo moment so now I'm going to answer some of your questions regarding this class and any other questions you have totally cool it doesn't have to just be about this class it can be about anything so um oh you guys are just the cutest okay um, what brush did you use to apply the black eyeshadow to smoke it more right before applying the lashes? That was a small a Morphe brush. I'm going to whip it out again so you guys can see it. Um, I, oh my gosh, if I can find it, there it is. I love it so much. It is Morphe M506. This is the brush that I use for this outer corner just to give it a really nice smoky effect while still being very defined because it's super tiny. So it's not spreading color all over the place. It's looking really, really nice and smooth, but still defined. So everybody needs to go to morphebrushes.com or if you're in the Burbank area, uh, you could go to their store and you need to get their flawless brush collection because that brush is in that collection or you could buy them separately, whatever. They're super cheap. I mean, really, really affordable, like a fraction of the cost of what MAC brushes are. Um, and they also have a pro discount, so you could um, try out for their pro discount and get their brushes. They have a whole line of those tapered brushes, so that's one of them for the eyes. But they also have larger ones for the face as well, like, like this, um, for contouring, which I use for the face. So totally recommend Morphe brushes. One of my favorites. Sigma brushes are also awesome and all that good stuff let's see what else oh someone's asking what lip color was she wearing I threw on sore lip liner and myth lipstick but when blended it ends up looking a little bit more rosy for the rosy cat eye look um, so yeah that's kind of all that was on her lips um, I don't even think I put it we didn't even do a gloss over it it was just those two um, Here's another question. Would you still use such a thick line on the bottom lash line if your client has large round eyes? I find that only accentuates the roundness. Yes. So that is true what you just said. If someone has very round eyes, to go very thick with the eyeliner is going to accentuate the roundness. It's going to make it look more down and deep. So um, for someone with very round eyes, I would focus more on a thinner eyeliner on the bottom and a thicker wing that goes thick here and goes thinner and thinner. So you can create a little bit of more of that almond eye shape. And I would also recommend a little wing on the inner corner as well so you can lengthen the eye rather than keeping it round. So creating width and length this way basically is what's going to help that eye shape look even more flattering so no do not go super thick on the bottom when there's round eyes that you're working on thank you so much for that question actually um 
that was really helpful for everyone, I'm sure. Um, let's see. Oh, the type of lashes that were used, the name of them. I'm so sorry. I didn't even mention it. It is Let's Lash It Out from Juvia's Place, but the name of the lashes was Lucy. And it's, I mean, yeah, it's pretty appropriate, that very, like, old old look with a doll eye look. So the, the name is Lucy. Can you add glitter on top? Absolutely. I am a huge, huge advocate for glitter. I'm all about glitter eyes. So let's say if we added glitter over this cat eye smoky look, I you could either add a rosy glitter over the rosy area, or you could even add like a gold or sil silver glitter or beige glitter on the inner corner area as well as having the rosy gold glitter, I mean the rosy glitter on the outer corner. But um, just so that it doesn't look too overly done, I would probably add a hint of a rosy colored glitter right on that outer half of the eye where we put the rose color. So something similar. Um, some of my favorite glitters are from shopvioletboss.com. They have the biggest selection of glitters, and I highly recommend them. I also really love, um, what was it? Uh, what's that other glitter? The one that has the S? Shoot. There's another, gl <laughs> There's another glitter line. Uh, oh, my God, I must be following them, actually. Oh, no, S, what am I saying? It's eye candy. <laughs> Sugar pill actually is what I was thinking of, but it's um, eye candy cosmetics. I really, you know, so much going on these days. I'm sure you guys can ask Jen. Uh, eye candy cosmetics also has a really amazing array of colors for glitter. So eye candy cosmetics and uh, shopvioletboss.com are the two glitter companies that I love the most. Um... I'm going to refresh and answer some more questions. We have about 10 minutes left or so. What lighting do you use for better quality pictures? That's a huge question. So I have a Diva Ring Light from DivaRingLight.com, but I got it on Amazon. Um, the Diva Ring Light, that's the name brand of it. So if you're searching for a ring light, search Diva Ring Light 18 inches. There's also a 12 inch one, which is smaller, but I go for the 18 inches so it kind of illuminates everything. I have one right in front of me behind this camera here. You saw a picture of it on my Instagram. And then we have two soft boxes on the side. Now, when I'm taking pictures, I usually just have the ring light um, at home and I go behind the ring light and I take pictures of my clients. When I'm taking selfies, I usually take it in front of my Glamcore mirror, which is a light up mirror or I just blindly take the pictures with um, you know, the ring light in front of me. And that is literally the best lighting system I've ever, ever tried is the Diva ring light. Um, and as far as the camera, I use the Sony Nex6 camera. It is not available in stores. You have to find it on Amazon or eBay. And usually you cannot find a new one. It's very rare to find a new one. So I would get a used one, one that's gently used or refurbished. Don't worry about all that. A camera's a camera. If it works, it works. And um, I've already bought two because I broke my first one. I know. Horrible. But Sony Next 6 is my favorite camera because it has Wi-Fi and it takes awesome pictures, especially for makeup. And even like if you don't have any lighting, their flash, the built-in flash that's in the Sony Next 6 is really good. I've tried a lot of cameras where the built-in flash ends up totally washing out everything, but the Sony Next 6 is very easy to program. You can change the settings so that it doesn't wash out anything, and you can actually see the color of the makeup very vividly and whatnot. But I know that there is newer versions of that camera out now, so just kind of do a little research and see which one you would like the best, but make sure it has Wi-Fi, especially if you're like me. I'm always on the run. I'm always out and about. And if I'm trying to share pictures of my clients on Instagram, um, I, and I don't have a computer in front of me or I'm traveling or whatever, it's such an awesome privilege to have Wi-Fi in a camera so you can just send it straight to your phone and then upload on Instagram with no computer needed. So those are my little uh, photography secrets that I have here. And for close set eyes, is it okay to bring the transitional shadow all the way to the inner eyes or stuck halfway? 
Um, okay, so what you're asking is, so if someone has close set eyes, remember how when I did Britney's makeup just now, uh, the transition shade, which is that contouring shade that I use, the caramel color, which is called Bengal from my palette, I use that all the way through the socket, all the way to the nose bridge. Now, if someone has close set eyes, you do not want to bring that transitional color all the way to the nose bridge. You want to stop it about halfway out so that you're actually doing more of a spreading out action with the color rather than a going in action. So for most, you know, like average um, spread apart eyes, I usually do the whole thing. I go in and out. So it's not just bringing it in, it's also extending it out, so it just makes the eyes look bigger. But if someone already has close set eyes, do not do this inner shading thing. It's only gonna make the eyes look closer together. So focus more on the outer portion. Now, on the contrary, for somebody who has very wide apart eyes, you do not wanna do so much wing action on the outside. You wanna focus more towards the inner and the center of their eye to bring their eyes in more, connecting it in to the nose bridge rather than going all the way out into their temple zone, okay? So it all depends on where the eyes are located on the face and we're all about bringing balance and harmony to the whole look by kind of camouflaging and faking it. Ah, oh, the magic of makeup. So fun. Brow question. Can you do a class on brows? Oh, yes, of course. I've actually done a class on brows before, but I can easily do another one or maybe dedicate some of the class towards brow and the rest towards the rest of the look. Absolutely. Um, I tried to explain a lot during today's class, too. Um, and I know that my model had great brows to begin with, but I personally use the same product, the Dip Brow, using it the same way, and I have, like, almost no brows to begin with. I will actually show you guys eventually maybe on my page like a before and after of myself like with no eye makeup either and then you guys will understand what I have to deal with on a daily basis like I don't do my full makeup daily but I always do my brows daily like I will not go anywhere without my brows on and you guys will probably see why if I have the guts to post it again I posted it actually a long time ago if you go down my I know I have like a gazillion pictures on my feed but if you go down my uh, Instagram page You'll see like in the beginnings, I did a step-by-step -step, um, brow thing with Anastasia products like two years ago. And you could see my original brow is so bad. And it's still like that, it never got better. Um, but I, you know, when you, when you have bad brows to begin with, you kind of naturally become really good at faking it and doing brows. So because my brows are so naturally horrible, I feel like I could do anyone's brow and make it fabulous because I've had to work on the worst. So uh, I'll definitely share a little bit more on brows with you guys for sure. Um, alrighty. Okay, if you have puffy eyes, can you still go thick underneath? Absolutely. The thing with puffy eyes is you kind of do want them to recede anyway. And you know the trick with contour is when you're contouring something, it looks like it's going in deeper. So if you have puffy eyes that are coming out, and you can just add a little dark eyeshadow under there and it'll make the puffiness look a little bit less. So if someone has super, super dark circles, what you want to do instead of puffiness, what you want to do is make sure you have corrected the darkness first before doing any of the eye stuff because it does need a lot of correction. So super dark circles would mean adding orange concealer to knock out that darkness and then adding a beige concealer over it or beige powder or whatever you want to do over it to make it look like the client's skin color again. And then you could do whatever you want to do with the eyeshadow. Now for puffiness, like I said, you don't have to really correct puffiness as far as color is concerned because we're just talking about puffiness. So with puffiness, if there's a lot of fluid under the eyes or whatever creating this kind of bulge, using darker eyeshadows or darker powder on the bulge area and lighter powder under the bulge area will make the bulge look like it's going in and make the under part look like it's coming up so it looks a little bit more on one level. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but try it at home. If any of you have puffy eyes or bulging eyes, the part that's bulging out, use a darker color powder and the part that's receding in, use a lighter color powder and you'll see that it starts to balance in pictures really nicely. So test it out and hashtag Dress Your Face Live so I can see that you're doing it correctly and comment and like your picture, of course. I love liking all of your lovely posts out there. Now I have time for maybe one more question. When you add the glitter, do you have to add glue and ruin all that work that you just did? Okay. 
So with glitter, I did a glitter class also, but I, I'm going to keep doing these classes, by the way, are ongoing. It's not ending. I have a gazillion topics to share with you guys and it always changes. Makeup always updates. Trends always evolve. And so we always have something to teach you. So we are going to continue going and, you know, with the glitter thing, I'm going to be showing glitter over and over again, you know, new looks, new ways to do it. But to answer your question, when you're applying glitter, what I normally do is instead of doing a base and then putting glitter over that base, what I normally do is I use a gel base for the glitter. I have a little palette thingy. I put the gel base on and then I pour a little bit of glitter over it and mix it with a little brush and it becomes a paste. So the glitter paste, when you put it on your eye, there's absolutely no fallout because all the glitter is stuck to each other and it's not loose glitter that you're using at all. So you're putting that loose glitter in that gel base that you have, mixing that up and creating a paste and that's why I never have fallout when I'm using glitter. The trick is to use a very thin layer of that glitter paste on the eyelid and making sure your client or yourself keeps your eyes looking down or just not opening the eyes at all so that there's no creasing going on while the glitter gel is uh, drying up. And then once it's all dry and you do this fan thing and you say, oh, it does it feel cool on your eyes when I'm doing this? And the client says, no, that means it's dried. If they say, yes, it feels cold when you're doing this, that means it's still wet and they're feeling cold. So do not open your eyes. So once the client's eyes are completely dry after this little test, then you you know they can open their eyes and you'll notice none of it's going to flake off or fall off um, because you've applied a perfectly thin even layer of paste rather than a gel and then adding glitter over it and not really sealing it so that's how i do it that's how it's done very easy very simple very foolproof and awesome so that concludes the q a portion of this class i just want to say we have a lot of uh, new things going on. Um, obviously, you guys are my members, so you guys are going to be the first to know when the certification program is coming out. We have been talking about certificates for like God knows how many weeks. And finally, finally, we're at that home stretch where we're like, okay, I have filmed the tutorials for you guys. Very advanced, good stuff in those tutorials and there is going to be quizzes at the end of each section so you guys will basically earn your certificates after proving to me that you've learned and basically you have to pass the exams to get your uh, certificate so that's how i figured out how to actually test you guys is to make sure you guys are seeing those sp special certificate videos and then getting tested so you can earn your certificate that way that program will roll out hopefully either by the way end of this month or by the beginning of April, most likely in April, because I really want it to be perfect before I roll it out. But you guys are gonna get to know it first. So there is going to be a limit on how many certifications I'm going to be issuing per year. And because you guys are my loyal members, you guys are gonna be the first to find out. I'm not even gonna announce it on Instagram unless you guys have your first dibs on it. So I'm gonna allow you guys to go in and order whatever you want whatever program you want to go through and then once you guys have you know secured your spots in the certification program then I will open it up to the Instagram community but you must be a member to join anyway but because you guys are already my members I want to give you guys the heads up first before I bring new members on okay so I'm so excited that's gonna happen pretty soon um, another thing is the next class that I have is my own contour class oh my god I'm gonna show you guys what I look like without face makeup on Holy moly, you're gonna see everything from the beginning to the end of my face makeup. So we're gonna start with foundation, we're gonna go all the way to contouring and perfecting and all that lovely stuff. So that's happening on the 23rd. And after that, on April 1st, we're gonna have Griselda come in. Griselda, makeup artist on Instagram, makeup by Griselda. Um, she's gonna come and we're gonna do a full face makeup tutorial, including eyes. So it's gonna be face and eyes makeup tutorial. It's gonna be a bridal makeup look, finally a bridal makeup class. And that's going to happen um, uh, April 1st. After that, we have so many amazing things going on. Check your class schedule. There is so much going on. I don't even know like what to talk about. So all that stuff is happening. Uh, I've, I'm sure you guys have noticed the new website, how cool it looks. So thank you guys for the awesome comments on the new website. I'm very proud of my team for making it so user-friendly and amazing and all that good stuff. Uh, what else? I, oh, my gosh. Hello, the, the giveaway. Okay. 
So we have randomly chosen a winner of my latest giveaway, which is the um, Bombay Hair Tamana hairstyling set. It is a set that is retailing for two hundred dollars. It's like one ninety nine, um, and it comes with everything you need for styling any kind of hairstyle you'd ever want to style. So it comes with a straightener, comes with three different size wands, comes with gloves, comes with a stand, comes with a mat, comes with, I mean. A warranty, you get a warranty out of it. Um, a whole bunch of stuff in this kit for $199. Plus, if you use my discount code on bombayhair.com for the Tamana set, enter Tamana, T-A-M-A-N-N-A, and you will get a discount on that already discounted price. So all that for $199. Like, I've, I've bought a straightener for more than $199, and that broke within a year. So now you can get this entire set for the same price, plus the one-year warranty, um, plus the extra discount if you use my code Tamana, T-A-M-A-N-N-A -N -N -A, at checkout. Enter my code, get 10% off, which would be like 20 bucks off. So you get it for 179 if you're in the U.S. or I don't know what it converts to when you're converting it to pounds or euros. Um, but definitely check that out. But anyway, this amazing winner just won that whole set. And the winner is, I screenshotted her, so I have to look for it now. The winner is Sam Lux. So Sam Lux, if you're watching, you are the winner of this amazing hot tool set. This is you, Sam Lux. You are the winner. Thank you for joining. I'm so excited that you won. Uh, basically, I do these awesome giveaways with every scheduled class, like I've been saying. And uh, the bonus classes are just bonus classes, but every scheduled class, like today was an actual scheduled class, and we have a new giveaway. So this was the winner for the last giveaway. Congratulations. I'm going to contact you soon so I can get your shipping information and send you your lovely kit. And now for this giveaway. Okay, I'm going to post this giveaway either later, to, or actually tomorrow morning. Give me till tomorrow morning. I'm going to post the giveaway details tomorrow morning. So go on my Instagram page tomorrow morning and look for the post. What I want to do, like usually I have sponsors doing the giveaway, like other people give me prizes to give to you guys as sponsors. You know, they want to give back to my girls and we have a good relationship going. But since I'm moving soon, now that I bought a house and everything, um, I'm going to be going through a lot of my really cool makeup and hair stuff and creating my own like super amazing package. I'm going to value it at $500 minimum. It could be more. So I'm going to give you a personalized package from me to one lucky winner from tonight's episode this gift set of a bunch of things hair stuff makeup stuff nail stuff you know unused of course none of it have been opened these are brand new items that I have been collecting and I'm going to gift one lucky winner a massive set of my personal goodies valued at at least $500 could be more if you enter this giveaway. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna to post the details of this giveaway. What you have to do to enter is to post the flyer that I'm gonna to post tomorrow and also post screenshots from this class from today. So you're gonna to have to post pictures of me doing Britney's makeup or for her final look or whatever you want from this class so I can see that you're a member because these giveaways are only for my members, nobody else. So as a thank you to my members, this is what I'm going to be doing every time. Go ahead and enter, take your screenshots. If you haven't taken any screenshots from this class, you can take one now, or you can wait till the rerun comes on tomorrow or later tonight. It's a long class, so uh, every class is a long class. I always say my classes are one hour, and it always ends up like two hours or an hour and a half. So anyway, um, once the class rerun comes up on your members' pages, you can replay it, take screenshots from that, whatever. But go ahead and enter my giveaways. There's always winners. People are awesome, and I like to give them stuff, so why not? Anyway. Thank you guys for watching. It was an amazing time. And uh, I'll see you in a few days for my contour class. Bye.